Welcome everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. We're thrilled to have Amanda deliver this session, this part one of three sessions uh, for marketing uh, related things. So thanks very much for joining. And uh, without further ado, I shall hand over to you, Amanda. Thank you. Um, I'd love to know, guys, have you come across me before? Am I uh, an old timer for you or am I new? Could you let me know in the chat box if I'm completely new or if I'm an old timer, just so I know who is on the workshop today. Um, new, 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 completely new speaker. Ooh, that's really exciting. Okay, all right. So what I haven't done, Steph and I decided that you don't need to hear loads of stuff about me, um, but very, very quickly, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Amanda C. Watts, and I specialize in helping accountancy firm owners and bookkeeping firm owners with marketing and branding. I've been doing this for five, six years, written two books around marketing, uh, and I'm going to share one of them for free with you uh, at the end of today. Um, and I speak at events like Accountex and um, QuickBooks. I've spoken at QuickBooks before. My number one love is helping you stand out in a category of one. So this is my favorite subject. I'm just gonna bring my table down a bit. This is my favorite subject. Um, and what I'm gonna share with you today is probably going to make the business, the biggest kind of change in your practice if you implement it. So um, yeah, go to oomph.global. Let me just show you my website very quickly global go have a have a nose at umph.global you'll have uh, more info about me there but that's about all i'm going to tell you today go to umph.global have a look at my youtube and uh start consuming my content there's plenty of content for free but what i want to do with you today is go through some strategies to build a brand and stand out in a category of one a uh, little bit of housekeeping um once we have gone through the webinar will be about 45 minutes i don't actually like calling it a webinar i'd rather call it a workshop um but we'll be about 45 minutes and we're going to be looking at three strategies to implement in your firm so you can stand out and attract premium clients uh if you've got any questions throughout this just put them in the chat box i'm happy to answer questions it will make my life really easy if before a question you put the letter Q, that would be super easy. So I can scan because I'm sure that you'll have other comments. But so if you've got a question, if you put a Q and then your question, and then I can answer it for you. I do speak fast. I'm going to have to try and slow down. I do try and slow down, but I get very excited about the subject. So if I'm speaking too fast, please be aware that we are recording this, aren't we, Steph? So hopefully you can watch the recording, okay? But any questions you have, put them in the chat box. I'll answer them as we go through. Uh, no question is too silly, so do share your thoughts. So what is a brand? Can you, in the chat box, let me know what you think a brand is? What is a brand? What does it mean to you? as the accountancy firm owner or someone who looks after the marketing in a firm, what is a brand to you? And if you're not clear, just write not clear, not sure, just so that I kind of get a feel for where you're at with it. Um, Fosia, what you or others can identify you as? Yeah. Okay, are there any others? Well-known name, your reputation, Jason, you're so smart. Uh, what your company represents, brand is an easily identifiable, oh gosh, look, hold on a second, concept or a vision, our packaging, says Layla, tone of voice, an identity. Okay, brilliant. So you're nearly there. Uh, some of you have almost got it. So let's just quickly dive into what a brand is. Brands do not live here. So what do I mean by brands do not live here? Well, this is the Jaguar logo in the background. Brands are not the logo. OK, what brands do actually is live in people's minds and a very simple way to describe a brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So you have a personal brand. My personal brand is Amanda C. Watts. We have a business brand. My business brand is Oomph Global. And then we have a product brand. And the product brand is the thing that you get known for the most okay and when someone says my name 
they then think quite often of the word momentum. So you guys are new to me, but uh, after a while, you'll get used to the word momentum. Okay. When people think of my name, they also would say energy. So they would say, you know, someone who I hang around with because it gives me energy because I have a lot of energy. Okay. So it's a feeling as well as a thing. Now, if we look at Apple, for example, let's go with someone really simple. We've got Apple as the business. We've got Steve Jobs as the personal brand. And then we've got our Apple phone as a product, or we've got the Apple computer as a product. Okay, so what we need to do is find a way so that when someone says Steve Jobs, what is the emotion that people have and the product that people think of? If someone says Apple, who is the person that they think of? And all of these weave in together. And we're going to be talking a little bit about this today. OK, um, a brand is the entity that is developed by a business. OK, so uh, that's a long phrase in itself. The entity that is developed by a business to shape the perception and build the reputation. So shape the perception and build the reputation. So again, this is very much about a feeling of this is how I feel about your business, Andy. This is what I think about your business. And this is what I hear about your business. And this is what a brand is. So in the next webinar that I'm going to do with you, we're going to be talking about marketing. But the brand is the thing that we have to create before we take something to market okay so what i would like you to understand though and this is kind of um this is kind of the thing that's difficult because we we want to move fast don't we we want to create a, a brand fast we want to get our marketing done we want to get clients fast we want to deliver fast we just want to move fast we we live in a really really fast world however the only way to build a brand is through consistency and we have to have that consistent message. So first of all, we have to come up with what that message is and have that message stand out in the sea of sameness, because there is a lot of sea of sameness and it doesn't happen overnight. And then what we have to do, we have to consistently deliver that message. So we have to create a consistent message and then consistently deliver it every single day. So to build a brand can take anywhere from six months to two years to three years to 10 years. Now, I've only been working with the accountancy uh, profession since 2017. That's when I started 2017. So we're, oh, we're six years now. Okay. Um, and when I first started working with the accountancy profession, the thing that I had to do to build a brand really, really fast was create 10 times as much content as all of my competitors so I could cut through the noise. Now, I wasn't sure what my message was other than I help people with marketing and I help accountants. I wasn't sure of my message back in 2017. And I got clarity on my message by creating a lot of content. Okay, so you're not going to get clarity on your message by trying to work it out in your brain. You're going to get clarity by creating content and taking it to market. Okay, so your message will come the more conversations you have. And that's why when I teach brand, and this is teaching brand, brand actually happens once you've started your business. You don't create a brand when you're in startup mode. You don't create a brand when you've gone, right, I'm going to leave PwC and start my accounting practice. I need clients, right, I'm going to create a brand. You don't do that. You need to get clients to get clarity on what it is that you're offering. And then when you know what you don't want to do, you can start to craft a business that you do want to do. Okay. So when you're clear on that, that's when your reputation can be built and all reputations are built and brands are built that way. Okay. So it's about the creation of content. It's about talking about what you do, but you can't do that until you can't do it until you have clients because you don't know who you help and what you stand for. So the three core pillars that a brand is built on are brand strategy. Now, brand strategy is what we're talking about today. And brand strategy is all about getting clarity on who you are, who you are for, so who your ideal clients are, why you show up and care. So why are you in business? What is your reason for being and how we actually show people that we help them? OK, so it's who you are, who you help how you help them. That's the, the three key things. The biggest problem, though, is that you're 
pretty much unable to do this because you've started your accountancy firm and as you are running it you're literally stuck in technician mode so most firms skip this step and lack the clarity needed to influence a prospect now there's a knock-on effect of that and i'll share that with you in a moment but brand strategy is essential for the foundations of your firm and most firms skip it then we have the uh, brand identity and brand identity is the bit that some of you got uh, and we're talking about a second ago so brand identity is about how you visually show up this is your website your fonts your colors and logo i actually would say this is branding this is kind of a stamp on your business so this is where you go i need a new website what color shall I have as my logo? Shall I have it blue or shall I have it green? They tend to be the questions that you ask. Um, you know, is this how I want to show up? Actually, what it is, is you lack the cohesiveness with your brand identity to install brand recognition. So all of you, if I look up Rachel, Joanne, Ainsley, Andy, if I look at any of you, I reckon your LinkedIn's will all look very similar. I reckon your websites will probably be very similar and we can't identify who you are and how you stand out. OK, now many of you are new to me, but if you were a regular, so this starts our relationship, if you were a regular, you would very quickly get to know that the um, you can see the circles in the corner, they're energy waves. OK, you'd get to know they're mine. I use them on everything. The colors that I use are used across all of my branding. So if you go and look at my LinkedIn or my website or my Facebook, it's all there. And my brand identity is very, very strong, just like my brand strategy is very strong and very specific with who I help and how I help them. And then the last one is brand marketing and branding without marketing is like having an engine without a fuel and marketing is where the rubber hits the road boom and it enables you to take off and deliver your brand to your audience now what happens is that you tend to do this not so well as well okay and when you don't do it very well you waste money and time on skipping the the marketing that works because you don't have that deep brand that enables your marketing to work okay so what i see happen a lot because of this okay uh, look at this lovely gentleman here he's like many many people on linkedin so he's hanging out on linkedin and he says i've made loads of money posting on linkedin let me show you how you can too how many people are watching this how many people are getting messages how many of you are getting messages from prospectors sending you messages on linkedin saying hey would you like to get more clients do you want help getting clients we can show you and send people direct messages and ask them if they want to buy from you zillions all the time all the time all right so look like, yeah and how does that make you feel okay how, do, how does that feel like what's the uh, i'm a real energy person um how, how does that bring um that feeling of trust to these people when they message you do, do you trust them? Do you feeling, do you have the feeling of, oh, you're so lovely. Thank you so much for messaging me. Just what I needed. Okay. Take no notice. Okay. So you overlook that brand. All right. Waste of time reading it. A hundred percent. So what we need to do then, if posting and messaging people on LinkedIn, so if messaging people on LinkedIn is like, hey, buy my stuff isn't working and doing posts on linkedin are okay but they're not building your brand what do we have to do instead okay so what we want to do is build a sustainable brand feels like it's a scam yeah absolutely it probably isn't a scam what i see a lot of people doing including accountants actually is teaching you guys how to use linkedin by sending messages to people saying hey do you want to buy my stuff and that's a numbers game okay so i know that if i send out a thousand messages to a thousand accountants and said hey i help you make more money uh can get you clients in the next 90 days give me this amount of money in exchange for all these clients you would say yes not necessarily you, but out of a thousand people, probably 30 people, 10 to 30 people would say yes. So it is a numbers game. So whilst you all feel this way, one of you could be the right person at the right time to buy from that. It's not the way to build a business. It's a way to get clients. It's not a way to build a business that people know, like, and trust, okay? Which is a sustainable brand.
So what we have to do is we have to get super clear on who's the right audience for us. We have to say the right message to them so that they go, oh, crumbs, that's amazing. I need more of that. Prime example um, is I spoke to a lovely lady this morning from Australia. She reached out, she booked a call to find out about Momentum. And the reason she reached out is because I did a post on my Facebook, not my LinkedIn, on my Facebook about being an introvert. So despite the fact that I, I have a lot of energy, I'm an empath, I feed off people's energies and I am an introvert. And I put a post up about how being an introvert uh, affected me when I was younger and she really resonated with it and she booked a call. So that message incorporated with the fact that I help people package up what they do to different differentiate themselves. Uh, those two enabled her to go, do you know what, Amanda is the right person for me. So the right audience, the right message and the right solution. And the message is the bit that most people struggle with. Okay, so if I said to you, hello, nice to meet you. What do you do? Put in the chat box for me, what would be your answer? Short and sweet, please. Not a, not a huge thing. What would be your answer to the question, what do you do? Okay, because this is the, the right message. What do you do? Let me know in the chat box. What is the answer? What do you do? Imagine you're at BNI or a networking event. What do you do? Rachel does marketing for accountants. <laughs> Working with small businesses to do accounts and tax returns. Accountant, computer science. I'm a proactive accountant, problem solver. That's interesting. What kind of problems do you solve, Sammy? Take the stress away, says Dean. Okay, cool. All right. So what we need to do, um, give tax advice. How many people really want tax advice? All right, we're, go we're going to dive into this around brand today. Okay, uh, Ainsley says it genuinely varies. If brave enough, I say a business advisor and save tax for clients. Nice. Be brave more often. Be brave more often uh making sure businesses pay the right tax a marketing executive for an accountancy firm okay cool all right let's have a look and see what we can do to fix some of this all right now i don't want to scare you but there are 21 steps to building your brand dna the great news is i'm not going to go through these 21 steps with you today because i think you'd fall asleep what we're going to do we're going to look at the three things that i've been speaking about which is target market your brand messaging and your brand offer, okay? So what we need to do to look at the first thing is understand that when we get this in place, okay, we are going to overcome some of these problems, okay? So without a cohesive brand, without a good target market, without a good message, and without a great offer, you're going to struggle to charge enough for your services. You're gonna be fishing in a pool with everybody else. We call it a red ocean. You're gonna be fish, fishing, fishing, fishing in a red ocean. And this red ocean is everybody fighting for the clients. So what do you do? you reduce how much you charge, okay? You struggle to attract the premium clients that are gonna happily pay you. So what we do is we undercharge, then when we get bad clients, we go, oh, this is pretty rubbish, but they're better than having no clients, okay? And then we miss out on attracting the top tier talent to our firm because we have a rubbish firm and nobody wants to work in it. One of the biggest problems that we see accountancy firm owners having at the moment is the ability to have the right team members. And the reason why the team members aren't coming is because your clients aren't very good and your offer isn't very good. It all starts there, okay? So what we do to have a cohesive brand strategy is to focus on it, okay? Now, if you don't have this brand strategy in place, you're really going to struggle with charging enough because you're not going to differentiate yourself in the marketplace. And when you don't struggle, you then can't afford to pay for an A-grade team because you don't have the profits in your business to pay for the team. If you can't afford to pay for a good team, you have friction with fulfillment because you haven't got the best talent. So then what happens is that your reputation suffers. So you don't charge enough, you can't pay for a good team, you have friction with fulfillment, your reputation suffers, and this means that you attract price sensitive clients. This makes you a transactional firm. And I don't particularly want to say the R word, 
But as we go into a recession, if you are a cost to a business and not an investment to a business, you're going to get struck off. People are going to look at you and go, you are annoying me because I can't see the value in spending this amount of money with you, accountancy firm owner. All right. You're a transactional business and people do not value transactions. You're just a cost. The other way of doing this, okay, is completely the opposite. So instead of starting with pricing or software or systems, what we have to do is create an offer so good that your ideal audience bites your hand off. When your ideal audience bites your hand off, they're going to pay you. They're going to pay you well. And you're going to attract ideal clients. You're going to give a great service. From giving a great service, you're going to attract the best talent to fulfill that because people are going to want to work with you. They're going to be excited because your reputation has gone through the roof. It's amazing. You're remembered and you're referred. And people are like, do you know what? This is, this is fab. You need to go and work for this accountancy firm because they're transforming people's lives. And this is why brand is so important because it's not just about attracting ideal clients. It's also about attracting the best team. When you, it's like a knock on effect. One of my clients, Alistair, he came to me for help with marketing a couple of years ago. He had a team of three. After 12 months, he had a team of 14, and that was through his marketing. He didn't pay any recruitment agencies. He just built an amazing team because he showed up online beautifully. Okay. So the plan is to create an ideal offer. So good that your ideal audience bites your hands off and pays you handsomely in the process okay so let's have a look about at the target market so the target market is the segment that you want to go after all right now you can target everybody let me know in the chat box are you a niche firm do you do you have like a certain kind of target market or do you help everybody with all things tax and accounting let me know in the chat box uh, what is it that you do? What, what is it that you help people with, please? Um, and let me just have a look here. Okay, so what have we got here? Uh, everybody, all things tax, accounts and audit. Uh, oh, aviation and logistics. Excellent. Full service, says Scott. Um, business owners and entrepreneurs, that's pretty much everybody, Andy. Sorry, everybody's a business owner, unless you do personal tax, but everybody's a business owner. Range with some specialisms, all things accounting related, that would be everybody. Um, Irina, what's your niche? That would be interesting. Uh, okay, all right, so you can't target everybody, it is actually a poor strategy if you target all people with all things then you're really not going to stand out. Remember, as we go into this recession, and I, I hate talking about it, so I'm not going to talk about it very much, but as we are going into a market that's contracting, we have to think we're going to lose clients and we're going to have to replace those clients because if we don't replace them, we're going to have to let team go. And if we have a reputation for letting team go, then we're going to not have a reputation for attracting the best team. So we need to have really, really good ideal clients that we serve exceptionally well that we understand inside and out and that we can easily articulate who we help and how we help them and attract those people to us okay all right so let's have a look it's better to identify a business that you have experience in or a passion for so here's a question for you if you could help anyone like, I know that you run your practice at the moment or you're doing the marketing for a practice at the moment. Um, I know that you can help anyone. You can help everyone. But if there was one business that you felt like you understood, either a family business that you, you, you might have worked in or previously you've worked in industry and you've worked for this business and you really, really understand it, or maybe you've run your accounting firm for a long time and you're like, do you know what? I've had lots of these clients and I really, really like them. Who would that be? Okay, just think about it for the moment. If you could only choose to work with one kind of client, one kind of client, and I'll share with you, I'm not an accountant. My father is a tax technician. Uh, he retired back in 2017, and he's the reason why I help accountants. So we, we look at my business and, and my chosen niche. He said to me, 
they need your help. And I was like, oh, I know they need my help. The reason I know they need my help is because I've lived with you for 40 years, dad. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, do you remember when I was 10, 11, 12, when we'd go on holiday and you were super, super stressed and it took you four days to wind down. And then before the holiday started, like before the holiday finished, you were starting to get stressed again. Uh, and he said, yes. I said, well, that's when you were working for stories. And he said, yes, it was really stressful. I said, so yeah, you, you found working hard. And he said, yes. And then I said, do you remember when you got made redundant? And he's like, yes, because he got made redundant. Um, and he's, I said, do you remember when I wanted to go to university? He's like, yeah, you couldn't go to university because at that point, grants were given out on the earnings from the previous year. I think they still are actually on the previous year of your family. So I couldn't get a loan to go to uni. And the accountancy firm that dad worked for, one of the big four, got made him redundant. So I didn't get to go to uni. Dad had a small nervous breakdown, tried setting up his own business, found it really difficult to get anything other than personal tax clients, found it difficult to get business clients. And I said for 10 years, between the ages of sort of 10 and 20, being a daughter of a tax technician that worked for the big four and then tried to set up his own business was really hard. As a family, we were always worried about money. We were always tiptoeing around Christmas, you know, during tax season, you then go on, um, on Boxing Day and be really stressed and stuck in your office upstairs. And I said, that's why I want to help accountants. And there's a reason why I help you guys. So when I ask you the question, who is that one person that if you could really choose to help, what is the story behind that? That is what people want to hear and why they will want to work with you. So let me just have a look and see what's coming up. Um, so farming businesses, aviation and logistics, again, well, that's good. OMBs, um, owner management manager businesses, family office, engineers, solicitors, construction, tech companies, caravan and chalet parks. So my, my kind of message to you here is identify a business that you have experience in or a passion for that you want to help and do just one thing, okay? And that one thing is to go after them and work with them and make your marketing relevant for them. So this is Christina. And Christina specializes in helping companies looking to enter the Chinese market. And she has this really nice niche. She's worked with uh, people to get into China since 2003. So nobody else does really what she does in the way that she does it. And she has built her profile. And if you go and look at her on LinkedIn, on Facebook, she's built a specific targeted audience of over 30,000 people. So this is on her email list and her social. And she now has positioned herself as an expert and sells her services for 10 to 20K a year. Now, not all of you want to offer advisory. Some of you like to do the compliance and the tax side of things. But if you could increase your prices just by being a specialist, how would that feel to you? How would you, how would that change your world? Knowing every single day that I'm getting up to help this person with this problem, and be so good at it, this is the key thing, be so good at it that I can systemize everything that I do and I can make a difference to that specific industry that I help, all right? Because it's not just about you, it's about how you can then help the industry. So the reason I help accountants is because I, I actually want to change your profession. I think the way you do it's completely daft. So uh, I have this whole idea of how I'm gonna change the profession and that's what I'm gonna work on till I die. Um, but anyway, that's there's a big mission behind what I do and why I do it. OK, and people do buy into that. So here's another thing as well is when I'm talking about niching, which I know so many of you do not want to do. I want you to think about niching your marketing, not your practice. So that means that you can work with whoever you want. If they come across you and they're a really good ideal client for you, then work with them. That's absolutely fine but your marketing should be specific for a specific kind of person with a specific kind of problem and a specific solution for them. Then you'll attract the better clients, okay? So your mantra is niche your marketing, not your accounting practice. 
Right, so how do you not close off other businesses coming to you if they only see you as a caravan park expert? All right, let me show you. Great question. I'm just going to see if I can find the WOW company and hope that they haven't changed their website because they are a great example. No, they haven't. All right, so Ainsley, what we have here is what we would call a generalist accountancy firm. And the reason why they're a generalist is because they their landing pages, the accountants you need right now, couldn't get much more general than that, really. Are you looking for more from your accountant? Does this feel like a generalist? Let me know in the chat box, okay? Plan for a bright future, remove the hassle, support when you need it. Now, this is the bit that is the specialist. We love working with agencies. So as you scroll down, they have a specific niche hidden amongst their generalist website. And if you have a look at the top, you can see that they have a section just for agencies. So what you would do, Ainsley, is you would have a generalist website like this. So we believe business can be beautiful or whatever it is that you want to say. And then you're gonna have a tab at the top of your website that says caravan and chalet box, all right? And then in that, you're gonna be an absolute specialist. Does that answer your question, Ainsley, on how you can do that? Okay, the other thing that you can do is you could have on your LinkedIn yourself as a specialist for caravan and chalet parks or Facebook, whichever you want to do. But what we can do is the rest of your team can be the generalist accountants. Okay, so I hopefully I'm answering that part of your question now for the website, but other forms of marketing. Your LinkedIn personal profile will be niche, your business on LinkedIn would be generalist. And if you've got multiple partners, so anyone, not just Rainsley, anyone who's listening today, if you've got multiple partners in your firm, each partner will have a niche or a specialism. So you'll either have a tax specialist or you'll have an agency specialist or you'll have a caravan specialist, okay? And each of those partners would then split it up, all right? So the key thing for you is to niche your marketing, not your practice, so you can take on other businesses but the magic comes when you can go hunting and you can start to create niche specific content. I wonder, okay, if I wasn't an accounting specialist with marketing, I wonder if so many of you would be listening to what I'm saying and trusting it as much as if I was just a marketer. Because I know for a fact that many of you think that your business is different as an accountancy firm owner or as someone that works in accountancy firms. Yeah, but we have to do marketing different because we are different from every other kind of business out there. So if I was a generalist marketer, you wouldn't be listening as closely as the fact that I've been doing this for a long time with you guys. I've worked with over 500 firms very, very closely. I've also helped thousands of firms through webinars and podcasts and all that kind of thing. OK, so uh, over 500 of you I have worked with ranging from 100K turnover up to 7 million turnover. So it's really important for you to understand that these are tried and tested methods with accountancy firms. They're not tried and tested methods as a generalist. OK, yeah. So Layla's saying definitely only listening because you specialize. So if I wasn't that specialist, you wouldn't be here. If you want to do marketing, that cuts through the noise, then you have to be that specialist too, okay? You've got to be the specialist. Think about how you feel towards me, all right, and how you think about today's training and how then you want people to think about you because it goes both ways, all right? So we've looked at target market. Hopefully I've opened your mind up a little bit about that. I know that today we can't go really, really deep with everything. I will be talking about marketing in the next webinar, um, but I'm going to talk to you about brand messaging now. Uh, so Kizzy says, is it possible to specialize in location rather than industry? I specialize in businesses based in Oxford. The problem with that is that you are still a generalist with your knowledge, okay? So you're location-based, but your knowledge is still I knowing about, I don't know, 100, 200, 300 different kinds of businesses. If you wanted to do that, Kizzy, what I would suggest you do is go, it's gonna be a general specialist, all right? So what that would be is we work with businesses in the Ox, uh, Oxford area, as an example, but these businesses are high street businesses. 
again, a little bit generalist, but also have a terminology that people can go, oh, I'm a high street business, I'm going to put my hand up. Or you could say we work with businesses in Oxford that are owned by uh, a family. So we work with family businesses in Oxford. Ooh, that's me. I can put my hand up. People have to be able to put their hand up and go, ooh, that's me. You must know stuff about me. I want to know what the secret source is. OK, so you can't just specialize in location, but you could specialize in location and have a slightly broader niche than if you were going to go nationally, you'd have a, a tighter niche. Hopefully that answers that one. So many questions around niching. All right, let's do brand messaging. So we need to craft a core message that we get known for. When you're standing on the podium, you better have something relevant and enticing to say. So when you stand up and you do your 60 seconds at BNI or you go to a networking event and you are standing there, do you have something relevant and enticing to say? Or do you say, we help businesses with tax. I'm an accountant. We're your local friendly accounting firm. All right. So they're the things that we kind of tend to say. So what we have to do is actually have something enticing for our ideal audience. This is where most professionals go wrong. And uh, I don't particularly want you to do this now, but if you feel the urge to do it, do go have a look at your LinkedIn. What does it say on this bit here? So you can see Rich and I've picked someone in a completely different country. Uh, so that I don't embarrass him. I literally went on last night and grabbed someone that had the exact headline that you're not meant to have, certified public accounting firm owner at Schwartz and Associates. What do yours say? Do you say accountant? Do you say public accountant? Do you say certified? Do you say ACCA? Do you say CPA? Or do you say something that resonates with your ideal target market? OK, um, Ainsley, I'm going to come back to that question in a bit. All right. Um, what we want to understand is that most people who put up that they're th this kind of bio is that they spend half their time showing off their logo. Ha ha. Look at the header with their logo. And then the other half giving money to SEO experts. So type in the word SEO if you have ever thought that that's a solution to your problem. SEO, given money to an SEO company, have you worked? Have you ever done that? SEO, Jason says yes. Okay, SEO, yep. How's that worked out for you? Is that a smiley face or a sad face? Was it good or was it not good? All right, it was great. Okay, interesting. Interesting, I wonder, Scott, what your your website and uh, social media look like? Because if you're going to show up on Google, you need to have something that's enticing. All right, so what we want to do, helps get up the Google rankings, it does, but most people don't actually go on to Google. They'd spend more time hanging out on Instagram, even TikTok, LinkedIn, and Facebook and YouTube. Okay, so YouTube used to be the second largest search engine It's slowly becoming the first largest search engine. So let me know actually in the chat box, how many of you have done a video on YouTube or have a YouTube channel? Just type yes or no for me. No, Ainsley says yes. No, no, yes, yes. Great. Okay, so the yes is be consistent. The no's, mm, I think it's time that we need to think about that. Okay. Now, the professionals that end up relying on referrals at best uh, are the ones that struggle most through a recession. So if you're not getting leads from YouTube, from LinkedIn, from Facebook, this is where things are going to struggle. Sammy has a YouTube channel and a radio station. That sounds very cool. Yes, it does, Ainsley, doesn't it? It sounds excellent. OK, nobody lies awake at night worrying about the fact that they need an accountant. Like nobody does. Coach, do you think that your ideal client, and I'm, I'm really saying this with love, you'll totally get used to me. Do you think your ideal client is sitting in bed going, oh my gosh, it's three o'clock in the morning. I need an accountant. I need an accountant. Do you think that's what they're saying? I need to change accountants at three o'clock in the morning. No. All right. What are they doing? No chance. Right. So what are they saying when they're lying awake at three o'clock in the morning? I can't afford to pay myself this month. They're definitely saying that. I can't afford to pay my team this month. Yep, cash flow, that is. I don't know how to get more money out of my business. These are the things that they're 
laying awake at night. I can't afford to pay my VAT this month. They've overspent. I don't understand where all my money has gone. There is no way we can take the kids on holiday. Okay, so right now, September, October time, this is where people start thinking about next year's holiday and making sure they can bag the best deals. And they're laying awake going, we can't afford to book next year's holiday. We're going into a recession. I'm really, really scared. All right. I don't know how I'm going to pay for Christmas is the one that's probably on their mind the most. They're not laying awake going, oh, I need a new accountant. Just not happening. So what do we do? How do we make sure that we can actually reach these people so that they will be able to come across to you and go, you are the accountant for me, okay? So what is it that we do? Well, it's still crumbs. I'm not able to pay my school fees. I'm so stressed. I'm feeling poor and unhappy. These are the things that people are laying awake at night. So then what they do is they go onto social media and they sit on Facebook like this, literally like this lady. They sit on Facebook going, my life is crap. Pardon my French. My life is awful. Nothing's working. How am I going to pay the bills? And they are often thinking that their business is bleeding, which is ruining their lives. Okay. I wish someone could help me. And having been where these people are in the past in my life, I have literally gone onto Google and typed in the word help. <laughs> okay. Cause you just feel so bad and you've had no sleep. You've been awake all night. Okay. I wish someone could help me. And then what happens is when you're scrolling social media you're on LinkedIn or Facebook and you're scrolling social media, Ooh, this person's interesting. They have some great ideas. So content comes up in front of these people who've been awake all night. So they're really stressed, really tired. Let me read this article and find out more. They read the article and they see at the bottom of that article, oh, they have a webinar. I'm going to join that. And then they join the webinar and then they phone you and say, you understand my problems. How can you help me? And in that webinar, you haven't spoken about the fact that you're an accountant or that you help with tax. You've actually spoken about the pains that your ideal audience has. And if you think about what I've gone through with you here, your pains are that you can't charge enough, you can't get top tier talent, and you are unable to differentiate yourself in the marketplace, which means that you're just getting the bottom of the pile of really, really good clients, okay? So this is the journey your ideal client goes on. Does that make it clearer for you? Let me know in the chat box. How does, how does this make you feel, this journey? Because this is, this is the customer journey, okay? It's very, very different from, I need an accountant. What we do with this is the key thing. So that lady's problem, okay? Makes a lot of sense, good. That lady's problem is that she needs more money and she needs it fast. And this is Ben Rendell, one of my Momentum clients, and we changed his marketing message to helping B2B consultants unlock an additional 50K of income. Can you imagine what that 50K of income would do for her? She can pay her bills, she can pay her, she can have Christmas, and she can book the summer holiday next year and pay her mortgage. I hadn't even put in about the mortgage, okay? So if you have a look at Ben's, this is Ben's LinkedIn, I would love to compare that to your LinkedIn. And if you compare it to the one I showed you earlier, He's known as the Profit Alchemist. He helps B2B consultants and service providers. So the, the lady that asked me about uh, helping people in Oxford, I would say B2B consultants and service providers is a really wide niche, but he has niched on his offer, which is unlock an additional 50K of income from their business without needing more clients. Now, what's the magic here? Okay, magic here is if he works with the right client who hasn't had great accounts, he'll be able to unlock that additional 50K of income. He'll be able to look at their business and go, this is what you need to cut out. This is where you can save money. This is where you need to charge more. This is what's working for you. This isn't, and it's about interpreting the numbers. So he is pretty sure he can unlock additional 50K of income if someone's turning over about 500K. And that makes him valuable. Now he can charge 5k to 10k for that service, because 
ROI when someone invests in you, if they can get a five times ROI, if they invest 10K with you and you save them or make them 50K, that's a great ROI. Okay. So what happened is we crafted a unique message to differentiate him from other accounting firm owners. We made business coaches obsolete. So your biggest competitors are not other accountants. They are actually business coaches out there stealing your clients because they offer advisory and they're more confident in offering that advisory than many of you, okay? And when we literally, we changed his message from accountant to this, and within four days, we got calls booked in the diary. Sorry, within one week, we got four calls booked in the diary, all right? Just by changing this one line, okay? Let's have a look and see what your uh, comments are. Understanding customer journey and having relevant marketing messaging looks a winner. It totally is a winner. Uh, Finessa says, accountant for SMEs, contractors and consultants, save tax, maximize profit, IR35, startups. Most of your ideal clients don't know what you're talking about. I'm really sorry, Vanessa. Uh, maximize profit is okay. Startups, R&D. So R&D doesn't mean anything to anyone other than um, those who have had R&D around in their business for years. Okay, whereas R&D is now applicable to many, many more businesses. Um, cloud means nothing to a business owner. Corporate tax might mean a bit if they're well educated. Um, Anna says, I think we tend to feel shy of pitching this kind of headline. The business advisory group seems flooded. Not as flooded as the accountancy group. <laughs> okay. Um, so what we have to do is we have to have you stand out. And even if this feels too strong, Okay, we have to have something like, for example, like Christina, my client, Christina, hers was we help you get into China. All right. That's where the niche is important. This is the message. She was speaking on niche. You need to get them right. Okay. Jason says accounting for the legal profession. What do you do for the legal profession, though? Because accounting, what is accounting? What's the outcome? As I said, nobody is laying awake at night searching for an accountant. They want to pay their bills. They need more money. They have problems. Speak to their problems, okay? Define the perception you want to create. So understand how you want to show up and craft the framework of messages that will work together to shape it. So you don't just need one message. You need lots of messages around your marketing that all lead back and say that you help people in a certain way, okay? All right, so... Let's have a look at brand offer. Brand offer is my favorite, like my absolute favorite. This is all where we package up your expertise. And that's a great way to differentiate. So um, what I would say for uh, Anna, feel shy of pitching. This is the solution if you feel shy. You pitch around method, okay, around your offer. So let's have a look. Packaging the offer so that it overcomes multiple challenges. Okay, so if you think about the challenges that the lady had, she couldn't afford to pay her team, she couldn't afford to pay herself, there was no profit, she didn't understand what was going on in the business, that are, there are a lot of challenges, okay, but packaging up an offer to overcome all of those challenges provides a convincing argument that they are going to be able to overcome those problems, okay. So what we have to do is we, we take that package and we make it so that you overcome and transform your ideal client's lives. So how do we do that? Well, remember we've got the pain that that lady's in. She's sitting there and she's like, oh my God, my life is awful, my life is over. She's in pain. So we take the pain and we take them to where they want to be when we package up the offer. So pain they're in now, okay? For example, no money for bills, no profits in the business, unable to pay the team. Where, where do they want to be? They want to take holidays with the kiddies. They want to pay off their mortgage. They want to sell the business. Please note, where they want to be is not have more money to pay bills, have more profits and pay the team. Okay, because there's a bit that is the next step. So these are the features of working with us will give you more tax, will give you more money. You know, we're going to be able to help you with corporation tax. We're going to help you with IR35. They're the features of working with you. But the benefits is that you've got more holidays with the kiddies, you pay off the mortgage and you can sell the business. All right. Your job is to fill the gap 
so they can reach their desired income. It is also to articulate how you get them to their desired outcome, okay? So you have to talk less about compliance work and more about clients' pains and desires. And their desires are not tax. They're not tax savings. They're holidays with the kiddies, pay off your mortgage, exit the business. That's what their desires are. When you start speaking in that language, then you're going to resonate with the lady who's awake at three o'clock in the morning. Okay. So this is Nishi. He, he did our momentum program as well. He's still on our momentum program. He's been with us for a year and a half now. We created a methodology, a signature offer, we call it. Uh, and everything I do evolves around this signature offer. So all of the marketing that we're going to talk about in the next webinar will be how to take a signature offer and turn it into amazing uh, content marketing and really have you stand out. OK, but if you have a look, what is Nishi talking about here? So we specialize in supporting businesses with two plus employees. So they have to have employees by helping them deal with the root cause of cash flow issues, poor profitability and owner exhaustion. We've created a signature solution, which is the Apex solution, and it gives you the support you need to increase the value of your business to make it completely scalable and sellable. So he, they can exit the business and scale, okay? Now, what have we done? We looked at everything his clients needed to achieve the outcome they wanted. So it wasn't like, oh, we help you with tax, which a few of you have said. If you have a look, tax is only one of the strategies. So we call the, the three main awareness alignment assistance. We call those milestones when we put this together. And then all around the, the nine strategies around the outside, okay? So tax is only one of the strategies. And if you're just talking about one of the strategies, you're not transforming people's lives. You're just sticking a Band-Aid on them on their pain okay so we looked at everything his clients needed we packaged up the services into a step-by-step -step process we turned it into a visual model and we took that which was amazing it was so good i was so pleased when he did it he sold it to 20 of his current clients at 500 pound a month which added an additional 120,000 pounds worth of revenue for the 12 months when people worked with him they signed up for 12 months okay now this is the key thing we turned it into leveraged advisory, which I'll be talking to you about in webinar three. So webinar two is marketing that we're going to do. Webinar three is leveraged advisory. And now he serves these clients for £500 a month in a group format for a couple of hours a month because it's leveraged advisory. All right. And I'll share more about that. And you can also get a copy of my book, which explains it a bit more in depth. What do you think? Pretty cool, eh? We've stopped talking about accounting, really, haven't we? This is what I mean about wanting to change your profession, the way that we're doing it. Um, I hope it's given you some aha moments. Um, Ainsley says, sadly, we do some of this for compliance, uh, for our clients within the compliance fee. Stop doing it. Stop charging your money. Okay. We all probably have the same issue. Client need our services, but don't really see the value. This enables you to share the value. Okay. It's super clever. It is super clever. I'm so glad that you said that, Sammy, because it is. And it's my favorite thing. This is the magic. Like, yeah, choose a niche. Yeah, get your message right. But let me create a signature system for you. Let's work on that together. So it's unique to your business. Then you stand out. Then you never have to worry about what you're going to talk about because you everything leads back to this signature system. Yes, you probably do need to repackage. Yeah, consultative approach. Good. All right. So um, with regards to what we've gone through so far, we've looked at brand strategy and it's about who we are, uh, who we help. So who we are for, how we care, how we show them. Most of you haven't got that right. You skip this bit. We've gone through this today. I won't be covering brand identity with you. OK, so we're not going to be doing a webinar on brand identity. You need to speak to a branding specialist not a brand specialist, but you cannot speak to a branding specialist until you have your brand strategy sorted. All right. So this is the order that you do things. You go brand strategy, brand identity, but don't sort that out. OK, then what we're going to do is brand marketing. And I'm doing that with you in the next webinar. All right. What we're going to do is stop you from wasting money and have you stand out in that category of one. We've taken how to differentiate yourself. How do we get that out into the market is the next question. OK, so 
what questions do you have for me? And quickly, before we go into questions, I just want to what, write your questions in the chat box. Um, I just want to grab a link for you. Um, I've got a book I've written called Practice Growth Superpowers. If you'd like a free copy of it sent you in the post, you can have a PDF if you want, but if you're based in the UK, you can have it sent in the post. Um, please do just click on the link there and we will send it through to you. And in there, we go a little bit more into leveraged advisory and quite a lot more into creating your signature system, which was the bit where we package up what we do. Okay. So do we have any questions? I do know that I had one. I said I was going to come back to it. It was something around networking. Um, let me... So Ainsley said, are general networking events still relevant? They can be. Um, if you are wanting to get in front of, for example, professional service businesses like lawyers and HR consultants, for example, getting involved with the Chamber of Commerce might be a really good idea. Going to BNI as a visitor might be a really good idea. What I talk about with local networking is to always be the expert at the front of the room. So get speaking slots if you can. A better idea is to go to conferences where you've chosen a niche and there's a huge number of your ideal audience. So the reason we go to AccountX every year is because I get a speaking slot, speaking slot, and I get to speak in front of 100 people for 45 minutes, a bit like this with the webinar. Um, webinars are really good. The best thing is doing joint ventures. So teaming up with Steph and the team at Walters Kluwer for me is great for me. It's great for Walters Kluwer because we're there providing value to you. It's great for me because you're all newbies to me. So I've just grown my opportunities by 100 people today, which is amazing. And whether or not you ever work with me, it doesn't matter. I'm reaching my goals of changing the profession and how people think in the profession, which is what I want to do. OK, so hopefully that answers that question. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, creating time to develop these ideas and then implement is the first challenge. Yeah, it is a challenge. Um, however, if you want to change this and it's a priority for you, you will make it happen. You only ever do what's a priority. Uh, if you, I don't know how to tell this story, but a story that's come up in my mind, okay? Uh, it's a really horrible one, so please forgive me. You've got your children are on this skyscraper on the left, and on the right, you've got you on a skyscraper, and between these two skyscrapers is a really thin piece of rope. The children's skyscraper is on fire. Are you going to go across that piece of rope to rescue your children and take them back? Or are you going to go, oh, I don't think I can. That's too difficult. It's a priority for you to get to them. So you're going to go across that piece of rope. If your skyscraper is your business and it's on fire and you don't like the way it's being run and it's not giving you what you need and you're here on the left and you're like, well, my skyscraper is on fire, but actually I need to get my systems better and my clients are asking me for help. So I'll just let my business burn to the ground whilst I'm helping my clients. OK, that's what a horrible story to tell, but I hope that it's got the message across. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, how, how big is your fire? How, how much do you really want it? Because you will prioritize what's important to you. You will always save your children. Will you save your business? It was a really harsh story. Sorry. I've never told that story in that way before. It just came to me, Ainsley. I hope you're laughing and not getting out the, uh, the pitchforks. <laughs> All right. Um, Sammy says, the partners in my firm aren't super confident about public speaking, networking, putting themselves out there. Uh, I, on the other hand, have had no issue with this, but lack expertise. Yeah, I've got total advice, Sammy. If your partners can package up what they do and have that methodology like we had with uh, Nishi, if they can package that up, what you can do is you can start talking about that. And because it's high level and you don't have to have the in-depth knowledge on tax or how to do things, you will then be able to say, this is what our firm can help you with. And if you're interested, let me hook you up with one of the partners. So you just need to talk high level. And any one of my team can talk through our methodology, which I present in a monthly team meeting. I give them an update if anything's changed, how we're, the language that we're using, all that kind of thing. Any of them could talk to a prospect about what momentum is, any of them. 
Okay, so that's what you need to do is package it up so that you can talk high level. And then if people want specific answers, if they're not getting to speak to the partner, you then introduce them to the partner. Okay. Um, doo -doo -doo. Let's have a look. Uh, you're welcome. Okay, uh, Steph, do you want to come back in the room? Don't leave me hanging. Bye. <laughs> right. Okay, um, what's been your biggest takeaway, guys? Keep a takeaway, leave it in the chat box. Um, what's been like a, an aha moment? Steph, do you think that's a good way to finish off the, the webinar today? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Amanda. I think um, it's been a really engaging session. Thank you very much to those who have come on the chat and uh, got involved. That's been really helpful. Um, we will, uh, you will see a survey pop up after, after this session. So please do give us your top highlight, um, anything you want to know more about. Um, Amanda's doing her second session at this, well, coming in October on the 26th, same time at two o'clock. Um, so if you haven't booked on that, we will share the link with you so make sure that you attend that one as well mm, brilliant um so let's have a look at some of these takeaways keep them coming with the takeaways you've got brand strategy starts before branding yeah a hundred percent why why create your logo if you don't know what your business is about because your logo and your colors have to represent you the firm owner the business your values all that kind of thing um ladies is very good amanda thank you you're very welcome uh, insightful great awesome Walk well, before you can run, uh, very helpful. Brand strategy, brand strategy is amazing. Um, the thing out of brand strategy that will move the needle the most for you is the signature system. And that is the thing that will differentiate you in the marketplace because we've got 48 attendees on here right now. Out of the 48 attendees, you will all have a different signature system because you'll all have different intellectual property because it's created from your ideas, the way that you work, the way that you talk, the language that you use, they'll all be unique. And you can put them in a Venn diagram, you can put them in a squiggly diagram, it doesn't matter what the diagram looks like, it's the transformation and how you articulate it, you will all be different. And that's the, that's the amazing thing. Um, Maki, oh, I don't know how you say that. Makeo, I think it is. Been an eye opener in so many levels on everything marketing and branding. Amazing. Sammy says, well, on number two and three. Uh, honestly, the best webinar I've been on in months. Hey, amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steph said to me last night, she sent me a text and she's like, do you want to create a poll? It's like the whole thing's a poll. I just ask them <laughs> questions all the time, didn't I, Steph? I was like, don't, no need for a poll. It's fine. I make you talk to me all the way through it. Um, Emma says, helping people reach their desired outcome. All right. We could be here for hours. Steph, thank you for having me. Thank you for giving us your time, Amanda, and I'm really looking forward to the one next month. So um, we'll send you all the recording. Um, Amanda, if you want to share your slides with me, I'll send them on as well. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be in touch um, about the next one. So thank you so much, everyone. And thank you. I'll see you, you all in four weeks. See you later. <laughs> Have a great day. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.